Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Arifin from Mount Union. And on my right... Emily from Duquesne. And if you can decipher that, I'll have them talk a little bit more later. So today we're going to revisit the subject of beginner's mind. So keep in mind that during educational rounds, we try to present something that you can actually incorporate into your life. This isn't a lecture. We're hoping that you can add some creativity, some joy in your life, some health and wellness. Don't consider this a cure. Consider it an enhancement. So what we do is we offer possibilities. So have you ever seen a uh, horse race? Has anyone out there ever seen a thoroughbred horse race? Perhaps you have. Uh, and what, 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 do they, what are these? These are big, magnificent animals. They can do one thing and they can do it very well. They can run, they can run in a straight line. They can run in a straight line. However, when we look at these animals, when we look at these magnificent beasts, these thoroughbreds, what do they have on their eyes? What do they have on their eyes, around their eyes? They have blinders on. And sometimes when we walk through life, we walk through our life with blinders on too. So what we're doing is we're going to open up possibilities today. Uh, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. However, in the experts, there are few. So these young ladies were kind enough to play along with me today. So if you were looking at these two particular masks, which one, which one would be more inviting? Which one would be more curious to you? Which one would have the possibilities? If, you're, if you were going to investigate the person behind that mask, so when you're wearing a mask of black and white, what would you assume? What would you assume if you saw a person with a mask like that? Emily? I think you would think that they don't really have any sort of sense of fun in their life or curiosity. Everything's black and white. Everything's in that, in that manner of focus. So if you saw somebody with your type of mask, Allison, what, what would you assume? What would you think would be behind that mask, a person who wears that? Um, a person who is creative and inventive and fun. A person who has some imagination, a person who's perhaps inspired for life. And you go ahead and take those off. Thank you, and thank you for uh, thank you for playing along with me. So when we when we look at what what would a beginner's mind mean to you, Emily? I think it just means it's sort of a state of not really knowing, and it's leaves you open to lots of possibilities. Absolutely. So what I'd like you to do is look at the picture on the on the screen behind me. Look at the picture. And I'd like you to use this picture as an inspiration to open up your eyes. I'd like to ha help that remove the scales and be in this moment. Be in this moment. And without time traveling as we often do, without constantly looking into the future or living your life in a rear view mirror, focusing on what's going past you or what lies ahead rather than what's right in front of you. So that's, that's the concept of a beginner's mind. Many people go through life looking through a rear view mirror, do they not? Mm -hmm. Or viewing the life with regrets or what's behind them, or trying to look in a telescope, or trying perhaps to consult a magic eight ball and decide what the future holds for them. Would that be correct? Mm -hmm. So when are you alive? What, what time is it? What time is it, Allison? It's right now. It's right now. It's always right now, is it not? So certainly. So one of the things, how can we, how can we do, how, what can we do to have this beginner's mind? What can we do to have the wonder of this child to, to be in this moment and be such joyful? So what, are, what are some of the things we can do? What, uh, what are some of the things that we can talk about, Allison? Kind of approaching the world in a I don't know mind. Say more about that. Um, so with an I don't know mind, you have wider implications and you are always keeping an open mind and you are responding to what is happening right now. You mentioned to me earlier how a beginner, having had this beginner's mind, uh, played well with you on going into your rotations. Perhaps you could explain what rotations are and then how that served you. Okay. In PA school, your second year, you go out on rotations and they're either four to six weeks long and you get to go to different sites and experience different doctors, different types of medicine. And kind of every time you go there, you kind of have to figure out what that doctor likes, how they want to practice medicine, what medications they prefer. You kind of have to keep an open mind 
because what one person might think is the way to do it, steps one, two, three, might be different to the next person. So the I don't know mind. Yeah. The I don't know I don't mind. Know. Now, again, keep in mind that there's two perspectives to an I don't know mind. An I don't know mind means I don't care, or an I don't know mind means I'm open to possibilities. I don't know, however, what is behind that door. I'm not sure. So we talked, we talked before, uh, Emily, did we not, about on your rotations when you were with various doctors and a patient would hear, I don't know, from a doctor. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think whenever a patient hears, I don't know, from a doctor, it, it might be a little bit scary for them, but I also think that it can be sort of relatable and it's nice for them to feel like, okay, well, at least you're being honest with me and they can feel like, there's more there's possibilities so when we're when we have that experts mind we're laser focused are we not mm -hmm. and if we have those blinders on and sometimes we don't explore the possibilities where when you have an I don't know mind it's more of an aim it's more of an aim you're taking an open view Is that correct now one of the things we often sabotage our lives do we not from having a beginner's mind don't we Emily and some of the things that what we do is we we do this to ourselves and how do, so how do we do that sometimes? You put this one? Mm-hmm. So I think in life you should live without shoulds, which basically just kind of means that you shouldn't go through life saying, I should do this, I have to do this, because it kind of puts blinders on and it doesn't allow you to have those possibilities and have more choices. So when you give the shoulds, you give the must, you give the I need tos, I have tos, does that give you any choices? No, it just puts limits on everything. It puts it keeps you in one focus, does it not? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that takes away all choices, does it not, Allison? Yes, it does. Do you have any choices? Uh -huh. So when you when you walk into a when you walk into a rotation and before you walk in there and you say, I have to do well, mm -hmm. how does that what does that mean? What is that for you? Puts a lot of pressure on you. It puts absolutely a lot of pressure. And we've talked we talked a little bit earlier about times in your life when you have put up definite expectations, have we not? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so how did some of those work out? I think just going through PA school always, it puts a lot of pressure on you and you're constantly stressed out, but in the end, you end up succeeding. Well, you can, yes. And, mm -hmm. and remember, what we're talking about here is living a lifetime without definitive expectations. Sometimes, most people, and I want you to, to hear the words I say, is when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you'll, you'll ruin your whole day even before you get out of bed. Be thinking of the things that you have to do, or thinking of the things that could go wrong. How many, have you ever woken up in the morning and said, what, what a wonderful day? What possibilities? What would possibly happen today? No, because you're always thinking about everything you have mm -hmm. to do. Do you ever wake up in the morning and think of today as an adventure? I really don't think I've done that since I was a child. Yes. So what? Ha how? What? When do we lose that, Allison? When do we? When do we lose that wonder and joy of a child like this child back in front of us that is gazing in absolute wonder at this? I think whenever you start to understand more of the complexities of life, then you get overwhelmed with that. Mm -hmm. You stop living with that beginner's mind. Right, and you and then you put those blinders on, do you not? Mm -hmm. And then what you're failing to do is have emotional sobriety. And emotional sobriety is having that self-esteem and self-concept and identity formation and not allowing people, places, things, circumstances to and events to determine your own self-worth. Judging yourself against those, is it not? Mm -hmm. it, it's so hard to have to live without expectations, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So are you trying your best? I'm trying. I'm when, you, when you came in here this morning, did you wake up and think, gee, I wondered what we were going to do today? I wondered what Jim was going to talk about? I wondered what Jim was thinking? Of course not. No, I was <laughs> I thinking be. about driving. You have to, <laughs> right, right. So what I'd like everyone out there is to begin to experience their life like you're looking at the life through the eyes of a child. Let's stay away from the must, the have tos, I need to. And please, and what that involves, it involves being the observer behind this thinker. An observer behind the thinker. So remember, it's our thinker that gets dysregulated. It's our thinker that's giving us the have-tos, the needs, the, and the musts, okay? So when we're the observer, we can be that child. We can be that person again. We've never lost that. 
it's just been it's just been overclouded by our the octopus attachments to people, places, things, and situations that that hold us back from from really celebrating our life. And that's my challenge to everyone out there to celebrate your life every day. Every day is your birthday, and every day is like a like a new day and a new awakening. When the sun rises, greet up and and be joyous and be glad it's there. Be glad it's there and open your eyes and truly see. And you can drop the scales from your eyes. And I'm hoping that everyone out there will take a little bit of advantage about what we said today. Sit back and ponder ponder the words that we said. And at the end of every podcast, what we do is we give a free prescription. Do we not? Yeah. Does anyone remember? No. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait. Fishing without bait would certainly beginner's mind and having a open, open yourself up to a lifetime without definitive expectations. Fishing without bait means walking through life without, with, with having aiming rather than laser focusing and seeing what happens and seeing what's in front of you and being right in that moment. And as always, your admonition is, is to be kind to yourself and more importantly, to be kind to another. Until then, namaste.